Access more. Welcome to the Candace Cameron Bure podcast. I'm Candace. No matter who you are, life can feel like a roller coaster. But in the beauty and the chaos, life is full of love, joy, and kindness. Welcome to the Candace Cameron Bure podcast. I'm Candace. <laughs> but this podcast isn't about me, it's about you. I'm here to introduce you to some of my friends and to have open conversations about life's challenges, celebrations, and everything in between. I am so excited to introduce to you my season one guest host, Tara Lee Cobble. Now, Tara Lee finds so much joy in talking about the Bible, and that's why I asked her to join me today. She hosts the Bible Recap Podcast, where she walks listeners through the Bible in a year or two, if you're like me. (laughs) I can't wait for you to be a part of our conversations. Before we jump in, I want you to know about our favorite place for you to watch and listen to the Candace Cameron Bure podcast, Access More. The Access More network is home to great shows from people like Paula Ferris, Benjamin and Kirsten Watson, Bob Goff, and so many more. And we are thrilled that season one of the Candace Cameron Bure podcast will be available there too. To watch full video episodes of my show, go to accessmore.com, the Access More app, or you can follow the link directly from candice.com. I'll also have a link in all of my show notes. All right, Tara Lee, it's my turn. <sighs> Speed round. I oh get to ask goodness. you a lot of questions. <laughs> Retribution from last episode. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because our listeners want to learn more about you and I do too. Oh boy. Some of the fun stuff. <laughs> As a person who really loves fashion Mm -hmm. and has a clothing brand, Uh I want to know, is there a worst fashion moment or decision you've ever made in your life? Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, Yes. (laughs) But very collectively, here's what I will say. I did not know anything about fabrics until about three years ago. Okay. So pretty much everything I owned was polyester. And I could not figure out why I couldn't stop sweating everywhere I went. I was like, why is no one sweating but me? Like, I don't understand. Once you figure that out, 100% polyester is not breathable. It's life changing. It was a game changer for me. Polyester is great. It's Uh a great fabric to to mix and Mm -hmm. blend with. But 100% is is tough. Yeah, it was great for travel, especially because it doesn't wrinkle as much. It's super, And I travel a lot. But I would be in Israel and I would be just like, oh my goodness, I'm dying. Everybody looks comfortable. Not me. <laughs> so Cotton. yeah, yeah that's that, what... that was, that was a great decision. Cotton <laughs> was a great decision. Thanks God. That, that, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, what is, because of all your travels, mm-hmm. what is the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Oh my goodness. Um, well, I am not a super adventurous eater. I have my, my staples. Okay. Um, but, um, I think octopus is probably the the thing that really? to me, I know octopus is very normal for a lot of like <laughs> foodie people. But first of all, I have to tell you my biggest, I hope this isn't a question you're going to ask, but my biggest fear is being attacked by an octopus. Wait, and what? <laughs> did you watch my octopus? I did. My octopus okay. teacher. Yeah. I did. But I watched it through like splayed fingers. I couldn't, I was like having a Wait, hard time. Why do you have a fear of octopus? They're very strong and very smart and very sneaky and they live alone. And I don't trust, I mean, animals, like you just never Are know. Are you afraid it's just going to yeah. attach itself uh-huh. to you and yeah. you'll never get it off and it's it, just going to suck the life out yes, of you? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> They're very smart and that's terrifying because you don't know what they're going to do with those that smart. Okay. Yeah. So eating them might just be like super gross or you might or feel good about it because move. it's yeah. power <laughs> move. It's like I won. Okay. <laughs> totally. We won't tell the octopus teacher guy. I know. That was a really sweet story though. It really was. And I did, st- I, I've been diving a couple of times to overcome my fear Oh. And I intentionally went and asked my dive guide to take me to see an octopus Oh, so that I could try to like do did some you try to pet it? exposure therapy. I didn't try to pet it, but I did Poke watch it. with it. a stick? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good callback. Um, <laughs> I would have loved to have poked it with a stick. Um, no, but I watched it change colors. It was sitting on a rock and you know that they can change colors. Yes. I watched it get up and swim across the white sand ocean floor and it changed to white from brown on the rock to Ooh, white in the ocean. That's cool. 
I was like, That's okay, cool okay, I won't, I won't order them anymore for dinner. <laughs> okay. I already know the answer to this, mm-hmm. but are you a night person or a morning person? So much a night person. I Can you tell everyone approximately what time you wake up every morning? <laughs> approximately 10 a.m. Um, <laughs> I love that for you. I really do. As a person who gets up at 5 a.m. Oh. most mornings, I love that you get up at 10. I would love to. I want to be like you. Uh, I want to be the person who gets up at five and exercises, but I am a very much a night owl. And so I usually don't go to bed until around two, three, four. Um, wow. and, um, so I, I sleep the normal six to eight hours. I just do it at a different time than most people do when the world is asleep and I can just like get a bunch of work done, zero out my inboxes every night. Right. It's amazing. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because I just learned that not only do you love music, I mean, but you're actually a musical person Mm -hmm. and used to sing. And did you write your own songs? I did. Uh Oh my gosh, this is amazing. (laughs) The many facets of Tara Lee. So who, who is your, who's one of your favorite musicians of all time or concerts that you've been to? Candice. I love Coldplay. I love <laughs> Coldplay. I literally, I, I was just telling uh, some of the crew that I, <laughs> one time I heard that Coldplay was playing on the Today Show. Mm-hmm. They were playing in the plaza outside the Today Show building. So I've been to three actual concerts in stadiums, but they were going to play on the Today Show and I tried to get tickets, but they were sold out. So I took a New York Times and an umbrella. It was raining in March. It was in the thirties. And I laid out my New York Times on the sidewalk outside the Today Show building and I tied the umbrella to the railing and I slept out there so that I could stop it. Mm-hmm. Oh, stop it. I, you slept I out slept there? outside to hear Coldplay play three songs. The Was next it morning. worth it? Absolutely. Awesome. I love them. They're the best. That's great. Yeah. I love Coldplay too. Yeah. I don't know I'd, if I'd sleep outside in the rain on the sidewalk <laughs> for them, but I really do like I them. I also really love an adventure and that sounded adventurous. Yes. I was like, for the rest of my life, I'll be able to say I slept on the sidewalk to see them. <laughs> yeah. It's a good story. Yeah. Who, who do you love musically? I love a lot of people, but concert wise, like, mm-hmm. so every year I go see new kids on the block. Do they still do <laughs> concerts? Oh my goodness. Sellouts, huge what? arenas, massive everywhere. So they have, they've been having the mixtape tour for the last several years. So like this year I just went and (laughs) new kids are the headliners, but En Vogue, uh, Rick Astley, who else was there, um, this year in the past, Debbie Gibson, Tiffany, salt and Peppa. Like it is the best of the eighties. It's amazing. (laughs) They've toured with also Backstreet Boys and it's fun. Wow. Like that's the best part of it. It's just, it's really a bunch of 40 year old women (laughs) that are like, (laughs) we're reliving our youth. Yes. And, but it really is fun. There's Uh. nothing. It's not like extra provocative right. or, and yeah. it's, and it's, it's eighties lyrics, which I appreciate yeah. that are a little bit more toned down than right. some of the music yeah. today. So th- those are kind of, that's my, uh, that's my band, but I love a lot of music. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Last question. Mm-hmm. Last one, because I love that you asked me this question and I'd really like to know the same for you. Which mm-hmm. character in the Bible would you most like to meet in person? <sighs> okay. It, he's kind of obscure. But I love Apollos. He was a friend of Paul's in the New Testament. Some people think that he may have written the book of Hebrews. But I, first of all, he's, he's kind of my Bible crush. And so I can't talk about him too long or I might start <laughs> blushing. Um, but I, like I have, I've politely asked God if my, if I can live near him in the kingdom. <laughs> Wow. I, I love Apollos. He, one of the things I love about him is that when you, when you first meet Apollos in scripture, he's like actively sharing and teaching about what mm-hmm. he knows about Jesus. And when Paul and some of his friends meet Apollos and they find out that he's doing this, they're like, Hey, you, you don't have the whole story. Let us tell you, actually, do you know about the Holy Spirit? We need to tell you about the Holy Spirit. And he's like, I don't, who's the Holy Spirit? Is this all in Corinthians? Sorry. Is this like th- where the apostles, where the people kind of got divided by the apostles and he was one of them? Or am I thinking of someone else? Um, 
I think you're thinking, I'm not sure exactly what you're thinking about, but I think you're thinking of someone else. (laughs) Um, But um, he, uh, he, when, when they meet him, they tell him like, Hey, the Holy spirit exists. Uh And he's like, tell me more, teach me. And so Paul and Priscilla and Aquila, they sit down and teach him. And then he goes on and and share spreads even more. And I love that someone who's so passionate Mm -hmm. and he's teaching people that he's also humble to learn and receive. Mm, Yeah. Like somebody who's just so zealous, but who's like, there's still more for me to learn. Tell me everything. And I I just, I love. And you relate to him. I'm like, Dan, like, I hope you're single. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, Apollos. I love that. I'm going to go go look up Apollos (laughs) and I'm going to try to think about who I'm thinking about. Yeah, man. Anyway. This, like this whole thing, just like a, just like a New Kids on the Block concert. (laughs) um, This has been so fun for me. Like all the, the questions, but the whole podcast season has been really fun. And anybody who hasn't, if this is your first episode joining us, make sure you go back and, and check out the rest. Um, and I'm glad it's not over. And I'm also glad that after we wrap, there's still more to come. Like after yep. after all the seasons where it's just Candace and I talking, we get to talk with you, the, the viewer, the listener. We'd love for you to submit questions for us to answer. And you can submit those at Candace.com. That is also where you can sign up for the email. So mm-hmm. while, you're sign, while you're there, sign up for the podcast email. And in that email, you're going to get the place where you can buy tickets for the, for the event, for the live event. We'd love for you to join us. There's going to be some interactive things there as yeah. well. Um, some, some games that we play and a chance to interact with more of you guys in the audience. Um, so uh, it's been, we're, a, fun, we're fun girls. Okay. We're, we're going to have fun. fun. Yeah. <laughs> be games, probably some prizes. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of conversation. <laughs> Oh, when I think about this, this season, you know, in the very first episode, Mm -hmm. you shared the story of coming to faith at the age of 12. Um, That was when you met Jesus. And if you met Jesus at at 12, that means that you've now known Jesus for 33 years, which is long as he was alive. Um, So you've, you've known Jesus. Right. (laughs) (laughs) That's a long time to know somebody and a long time to see them at work in your life. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm sure that he's done a lot with your life during that time. Um, Is there anything that um, comes to mind between 12 and and now in those 33 years that you'd like to to share with, with us? I, I think one of the things that really stands out for me that I hope that one of you will relate to listening is that when I really started to get to know Jesus Mm -hmm. or get to know God Mm -hmm. at 24, after I had had my kids and it was as if that veil was lifted off of my eyes where I could now understand the Bible, that it, it just, it popped off the page Mm. verses Mm -hmm. and I had such a hunger and a desire to learn God's word, learn who he is and all about him and all the people that he interacted with. And I remember being in my bedroom that it was, the feeling was so overwhelming about that desire. And I got on my knees and I, and I prayed, I said, Lord, please don't let me forget how I'm feeling right now because mm. I don't want to just be all excited today. And then like, like any diet I've tried in the past, you know, after a week or two, you just kind of go like, ah, I'm tired of this. I don't want right. to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. I said, please don't ever let this desire burn mm. out from me. Don't ever let this candle or flame go dim yeah. or dull or, or be put out. I said, mm-hmm. please keep this passion and this desire to be in relationship with you and my desire to grow in you and with you and learn from you for mm-hmm. the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And it mm-hmm. was such an honest and earnest prayer from my heart. And all these years later, I'm like, God hasn't put that flame out. It's still burning bright. It's still burning bright. And I'm forever, forever grateful that he really fuels it. Mm -hmm. It is not something that I just actively said, I'm determined to do this now. And I'm just going to set it upon myself to now learn this. No, the desire comes from God and comes from the spirit's work in me Mm -hmm. that just pushes it on my, puts it on my heart and is like, I want to spend time with you. And I'm like, yes, Lord, I want to spend time with you. 
Man, I love that he changes hearts, Mm -hmm. that he's powerful enough because I can't change my own heart. I don't Mm -hmm. know if you've ever tried to do that or not, but I've tried and it does not work. And I love that he gives us that new life. You know, like we were created by God, recreated by the spirit at work in us to live like Jesus in the world around us. And so our salvation story, that new life story, the the way Romans 6 describes it is that you were raised from from the dead raised from the dead to walk in newness of life. And that, that just that transformation, like we were Mm -hmm. all born dead and we were recreated by the spirit to, to walk in the newness of life that, that Jesus demonstrated for us. And, um, Jesus came to show the world what God is like. And then we are the people who get to do that by the work of the spirit within us. Mm -hmm. Um, after I want to just pause Uh for a second, because that, what you just described is being born again. Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> and that terminology sometimes gets really um, misused by mm-hmm. people. And they think it's like this very weird sect of Christianity. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I know I get that. They're <laughs> yeah. like, oh, she's one of those born again. Right. <laughs> as if I'm like, it's, a, it's an extra weird thing on top of Christianity. Right. Um, and it's like, no, when you're born again, if you're mm-hmm. a Christian, it actually implies yes. that you have been born again, meaning reborn of the spirit right. that God gives you mm-hmm. new and right desires mm-hmm. in the spirit. Yeah. It's in John three. So one of the most famous Bible verses in the world is John three sixteen, And that's a, a word that Jesus says when he's talking to a guy named Nicodemus, Nicodemus mm-hmm. comes to him at night and asks him ab- about like who he is and what is this new life? And Jesus talks about being born again and talks about having the new life mm-hmm. like, that you just talked about. And so Anyone who is a Christian has been born again. And anyone who isn't a Christian has only been born once. They've only been born into the natural life and not into the spiritual life. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you're right. It it is a weird sounding term. And Mm -hmm. in fact, Nicodemus was pretty perplexed by it. If you go read that account, Nicodemus is like, what are you talking about? Right. I've already been born. Yeah. He's like, like, how am I going to do that? Yeah. Yeah. How am I going to be reborn through my mom again? Yeah. (laughs) So it is a super weird thing to say. Mm -hmm. But the meaning of it is just what you said, that the spirit gives this new life in us yeah, and recreates us to demonstrate Jesus to the world around us. And so in, in all of the, the endeavors that we face in life, all mm-hmm. the trials and circumstances and hardships and joys and everything, um, I love that we have the word of God to guide us, the spirit of God to guide us, other believers who have the spirit of God in them to guide us, mm-hmm. like the story you shared with, with your son, Lev, and his conversation with you and Val. Yep. Um, that all those people are working not only to guide us, but to reveal bits of who God is to us. Mm. That you learn you learned more through that conversation with Lev. You learn more about God and his what he can do in your life, what he says about marriage, all those things. And and that is so valuable. And it, if you missed that episode, listeners, viewers, go back and check out the last episode because <laughs> that was a powerful story of God at work in our hearts and through other people. Great American Family Channel is the place to find your new favorite holiday movies all year round. You might be wondering how to watch Great American Family Channel. You can text WINTER to 877-999-1225 for more details. And for you Full House fans, they have all the Full House and Fuller House reruns too. Text WINTER to 877-999-1225. Have there been other, apart from that story, other people that have been conduits who've shown you like God's love for you and comfort and things like that? Other people who've revealed God to you? I mean, the first person that comes to my mind is my mom. Mm -hmm. And that's because she is truly the most kind and gracious Mm -hmm. woman and loves the Lord so much. Mm -hmm. And by the way, my dad loves the Lord too, but Mm -hmm. it's just, it's in a different way. And it took my dad a lot longer, Mm -hmm. but I've always seen God modeled through my mom's actions my whole life. Yeah. And, and it's beautiful. I have friends in my life that exude joy from the Lord. Someone that comes to mind is my, my friend, Mandy Young Sigley. Mm-hmm. She got married uh, last year and I've talked about her in many of my books, but mm-hmm. she's the one of the, the only one in the world that has a, a gene deficiency that she has. And she should have 
died many times over. Her body doesn't actually recognize if it's sick. So she's had meningitis three times. It doesn't know it's sick until it's about to die, literally within an hour of death. So she doesn't cough. She doesn't get cold. She doesn't get fevers. Um, until she's very, very sick. She had her leg amputated when she was nine years old because it had gangrene in it. She just has a, a she, wow. she tells a story that her, her mom had a very rare gene. Her dad has a very rare gene. And the fact that they got married and had a child together, she got the two bad genes. What? That gave her this gene deficiency. Anyway, wow. she is pure sunshine. Pure sunshine. And she just exudes the joy of the wow. Lord and she wouldn't change her life for anything. She's, she is the lab rat of the NIH, the National Institute of Health. So she's like a living lab rat, allows them to do all kinds oh of goodness. tests and things to help other Others. people. Wow. And she's like, I wouldn't change it for anything. And it's grown her in character yeah. and in attitude and in all things. And so I look at that because she trusts the Lord that mm -hmm. that was that was her purpose yeah. in life. And um, I have one more I'll share quickly because she was my first mentor. I, when I came to really desire to know God at 24, we were living in Florida. Mm -hmm. And I started praying like, God, please, we had just moved there. And I said, help me int introduce me to people that know the Lord and love the Lord. I wasn't going to a church. I didn't know really anyone in my neighborhood. And so not long after praying for people to be surrounded by that knew the Lord, this woman came to my door and I opened the, she actually came through my garage. So that was like my first, like, okay, that's weird. She came through my garage door, like, and the door inside my house instead of my front door because my garage was open. And she was, uh, you know, probably maybe in her mid fifties. And at the time I was, yeah, in my twenties and she had a plate of cookies and she was really beautiful and had these, this beautiful dark brown hair and these big, I mean, piercing blue eyes. So I opened my door and she was like, hi, very soft spoken. And, and I said, hi. So I was a little creeped out that she came through my garage. Uh -huh. And she was <laughs> like, I heard that you just moved to the neighborhood and I'd like to give you these cookies. And being someone from LA, I was like, thank you. What do you want from me? I'm scared right now. Uh -huh. Like we're not that friendly yeah, in LA yeah. with neighbors. And it's also like, I don't eat sugar. It's, so it's, it's, it's like weird. So she was just like, welcome to the neighborhood. And I see that you're pregnant and I heard you have two other children. And if you'd like me to go to the grocery store and get all your groceries for you, here's my phone number. And you just call me anytime. And I was like, okay, okay. thank you. Closed the door, went straight to the trash, dumped the cookies in the garbage. I was like, I don't even know. I don't even know. Yeah. Anyway, I'm now at like our little community. They had like an open house. So I was like, I'm going to go and meet some neighbors. And I run into her. Her name was Debbie. We struck up a conversation and she said something about God. And I was like, oh, I just like, I just, I want to know more about God. And I've been praying to meet people in the neighborhood that are Christians. And she goes, well, I've been praying about starting a Bible study. And I was like, can I start a Bible study with you? I would love to. And she's like, yeah, and let's just, we'll talk to a few other people. Anyway, Debbie ended up becoming my mentor. What? We met for seven years every week, either in my home or her home or a couple other people's. And she was genuinely the nicest person I've ever known in my life. Such a servant's heart. And I just never had experienced that right. before. It's very uh, confusing when you encounter <laughs> that. You're like, I don't understand why you're being this way. Some people don't understand being born and raised in LA, but it is very <laughs> like you are very closed off with mm -hmm. neighbors and stuff, even unintentionally. Right. So anyway, she was like another person that just... I I mean, she shined God's light so much and spoke to, so much into my life mm -hmm. and, and, um, really as I've, I had grown with her, like the first seven years yeah. 
with her immensely in my relationship oh, with God. I bet she misses you so much. I know. We still we still talk. Aww. We still talk and write, and <laughs> she's always encouraging me. What about you? Um, oh, man. So in uh, our last episode, I shared about my two open heart surgeries and how I met my ICU nurse, my cardiac mm-hmm. ICU nurse. Um, she was the first person I saw, you know, after, after waking up, she, uh, rudely forced me to stand just a few hours after I, my chest was <laughs> sawed lady. open. Um, do you know but, what I just went yeah, through? Exactly. I'm like, how dare you? Uh, she's one of my best friends now. And, um, one of the things that has drawn me to her is just watching the way that she serves other people, mm. but also she knows her, she knows her limits. So she knows when to like, when, when she might be serving out of a selfish reason instead of out of mm. an overflow, but out of a vacuum, you know, cause some people serve yes. to get and not to give. Yes. And, um, and so she, I've watched her sort of navigate that and she just leans into the Lord and asks the Lord for direction. And she is a prayer. Like she loves mm. to pray the prayer warriors that we've talked about. Yes. And I've just watched this, this woman just, uh, demonstrate how she loves others well, how she loves the Lord, how she listens to him. And like, sometimes it, she will, she prays those very specific prayers like we've talked about. And it sounds kind of like, like there was a wedding. She was like not dating anybody, but there was a day on, she was like, I want to get married on this day. And I'm like, cool. Hope you meet somebody between now. (laughs) Right. Um, She's getting married the day after that, this fall. Like she's praying for November 6th and she's getting married November 7th. Like that kind of, Wow. specificity, yes. you know? Um, and so it's just, I've watched her interaction with the Lord. I've watched the way she loves others. And it's just, and of course my parents, my mom, mm-hmm. my dad, they modeled Christ to me. And of course, Lee, the pastor who told me to read the Bible, those are people who've really demonstrated God to me in huge ways. And, um, ju- it's just, I could, I could probably sit here. If we kept talking, I could list 150, 200 people. Me too. And what a gift. Yep. What a gift that God has just put these people in our lives yep. to let us see more of who he is. Yes. And I hope that that is the case for anybody who's listening. Yes. That God is just dropping people in your life to reveal more of who he is to you. Yeah. He's bringing Debbie's in, in your garage door to, <laughs> to bake yes. you cookies and um, just chase you down with the love of God. I think I did ask her, by the way, like, why did you go through my garage? And I think she, her, her answer was even thoughtful. Like, well, I knew you were nine months pregnant and I figured you were probably making the kids sandwiches and I didn't want you to have to go all the way to the front door. I mean, it was just, you know. <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> Let's be like Debbie, everyone. <laughs> Let's be like Debbie. Uh, well, it's amazing how God creates us all in his image and he continues to shape us and mold us if we just mm-hmm. listen and mm-hmm. pray and obey. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's wrap this up with our passage that we're memorizing. First John 5, we're adding a verse today, verses one through six. Tara Lee, would you like to read it this time? Sure. Do you want to? Here I've we read go. it every episode. <laughs> I love hearing you read the word. Go for it. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father also loves the one born of him. This is how we know that we love God's children when we love God and obey his commands. For this is what love for God is, to keep his commands. And his commands are not a burden because everyone who has been born of God conquers the world. This is the victory that has conquered the world, our faith. Jesus Christ, he is the one who came by water and blood, not by water only, but by water and by blood. And the spirit is the one who testifies because the spirit is the truth. That was awesome. Thanks. Again, I listened to you. Mm -hmm. And then, and I listened to the Bible recap and I just love listening to you read scripture so much. And you read it with such joy. Okay, as we get closer to the end of this season, we want to hear your questions because we're going to have a party with all of you. <laughs> <I> can't wait. <laughs> we want to know everything. You can ask us anything and everything, and we're going to answer on that special live stream that's going to come up. So go to Candice.com, submit your questions, and get ticket details. And while you're there, go ahead and grab Tara Lee's He's Where the Joy Is Bible Study that we've been talking about all season. Tara Lee, these chats have been so, so incredible. I feel so filled up. Um, I also can't wait for season two where we're going to talk with more amazing guests and we'll talk about 
topics like creativity and fitness and parenting, marriage, and so much more. And wherever you listen to your podcast, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. Until next time, be grateful all day, every day. This has been a Candace Cameron Bure podcast, a production of Candy Rock Entertainment. Some of the products and services mentioned are paid promotions. Any advice should be confirmed with a qualified professional. Opinions and ideas are for entertainment purposes only and belong to Candy Rock Entertainment. All rights reserved. Oh,